Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I'm ready to drop on you my new Nutcracker Squirrels Build Guide. And after streaming this build for over 10 hours, I can tell you that these squirrels are ferocious. And one of the funnest minion builds I have ever played. Now as always, we will look at gameplay, skills, passives, gear, and of course, break down the character sheet. Everything is timestamped in the description below if you need to bounce around. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay. Now the skills I'm gonna be using are Fury Leap, War Cry, Summon Frenzy Totem, Wolves, and Upheaval. And we're not going cold, we are not going crit, we are going bleed damage over time with these squirrels. Something also different is we are using Upheaval with this build, but not the normal Upheaval, we are using Upheaval Totem. And something really cool is that when you leap, so Fury Leap, jump, and land, it is going to auto cast an upheaval totem. So you land, your squirrels jump with you, your squirrels are there, your upheaval totems there, you war cry, and then you drop your frenzy totem. Works really good, all focused around bleed, and you will see it in action right now. They are fast little squirrels. And there's actually multiple iterations you can make for this build, and I'll kind of explain that during the skill section. Of course, these are empowered runs. You will see the modifiers over on the right hand side. And after this run, I will show you just how good squirrels are against single target as well when we fight the Shade of Oribus. And what's so interesting is a lot of times they're so small, you literally can't even see them not even see them. Just stuff is just disintegrating. All right, let's continue. Go get them, little squirrels. Go get them. Also, this character, I've never made a Beastmaster build before. It is so easy to level because squirrels clear the entire board. Look at this. You dead. And if you want to see tons and tons of gameplay for this build, it is also saved on my Twitch because we've streamed it for over 10 hours. Squirrels are ferocious. All right, where are you going? Let's track this dude down. And he's dead. Just crushing. All right, pop out of there. And I feel like this is something that you wouldn't expect because most minion builds, are they really that great around single target? Squirrels really, really are. Of course, this isn't powered. Life gone. What is real? Get them, squirrels. Almost dead. Done. It's crazy good. Let me show you how to recreate this build. So now let's break down the skills, starting with Upheaval. And again, we're gonna use Upheaval Totem. And when you take Upheaval Totem, it turns all the little nodes inside the skill tree into minion scaling. I confirm this with the developers. You want three into Inexhaustible, one into Mantle Strike, one into Upheaval Totems. This is the node that's important. You then want three into Rumble, four into Delving, four into Natural Weapons, and four into Glacial Impact. Now it's important that for this build, you use a two-handed weapon, specifically a two-handed axe, okay? Because inside of upheaval, in, in upheaval, rumble doubled if you have a two-handed weapon, so that means your bleed chance is gonna be 90%. 
Over here under natural weapons, axe is going to be 120% bleed chance. So now you're up to 210% bleed chance from your upheaval. And then last but not least, physical penetration moves from 40 to 80 if you are using a two-handed weapon. So lots of buffs and upheaval for using a two-handed axe. Moving over to wolf, but we all know this is really squirrels. The way you want this is two into endurance, two into recovery, one into earthborn, and one into pack hunters. These three nodes don't matter, it's just we need that extra squirrel. You then come down here, one into agility, four into claws, four into hunters, and two into wounds. These three nodes are your bleed. Bleed duration, bleed chance, and bleed effect. All right? You then want five on into on the hunt. This is your attack speed and movement speed. This is why your squirrels bounce everywhere. Now, important, okay? Inside of gear, the amulet you wear is the fang. And this makes it where you could summon wolves up to your maximum number of companions. If you don't have the fang, no big deal. Inside of wolves, you have safety in numbers. And this makes basically does the same thing. Wolves, wolves up to your companion limit. So if you don't have the fang, or honestly, you just want to use a different amulet, no problem. Pull one point out of crippling wounds and put it right here into safety and numbers. And now you can use any amulet you want. That is personal preference. Moving over to Fury Leap. All right. Now, the way you want to take Fury Leap. Five into Warrior's Entrance, three into Rage, one into Pack Leader. This makes it where your squirrels jump with you. They also are going to hit faster and do more damage. You then want one into Crater, four into Savage Impact, one into Aspect of the Mantis, two into Brutal Impact, and one into Violent Upheaval. So right here, Aspect of the Mantis makes it where you could jump twice if it's a short jump. And Violent Upheaval makes it with when you land, you make an Upheaval Totem. So you jump, you get those global buffs from the jump. You land, you make an Upheaval Totem. Then you Warcry, then use Frenzy Totem, and then activate the Squirrel's ability. And that's kind of your combo. And just everything melts. Last but not least, two into Panther Strike. And if you had more points to put into Fury Leap, I would put three here, and then I would just go larger area. Okay. Moving over to Summon Frenzy Totem. And man, this is one that I have messed with so, so much, but I feel like it's currently in its best iteration. You want four into Rabidity. Rabidity. I can't say it. 40% Frenzy for your squirrels. Uh, frenzy, 20% physical damage. Three into Totem. One into Symbol of Haste. One into Symbol of Selflessness, three into Totem, and this makes it where your Frenzy Totem only affects your companions. It does nothing for you, okay? But your Squirrels will be just that much stronger because of their physical resistance and elemental resistance. Squirrels almost never die. That's why they are so amazing. Now, something that I've changed on here that I've never seen anybody use before, okay? You also want two into Reinforced Totem and four into Thorn Idol. Now, Thorn Idol is very interesting. Listen to this. Frenzy Totem stores a portion of the damage it receives, releasing it as damage dealt to enemies after taking a percentage of its maximum health in damage. So that, you know, you're, you're th all your minions are generating threat, so enemies are fighting them. Well, in specifically your Summon Frenzy Totem, once it takes a certain amount of damage, it will release damage. It'll release that damage back to the enemies. And as you see here under more information, the damage is scaled by your increased minion damage. So just a little added buff and those four points like you get a little bit of haste, but the rest is not a big deal. So you have points to spare anyways. OK, a lot of people put them over here in lead of the pack. But since this is a damage over time build, not a crit build, you could save those five points. That's how we're able to get this pretty cool little note. I've never seen that before. Last but not least, War Cry. Ooh, I love me some War Cry. So what you want is you want to use War Cry as much as humanly possible. OK, and I'll explain. You want one into Roar, one into Scream, two into Shredded Howl, one into Shallow Breath. This makes it where the cooldown is 50%, which means you can use Warcry every five seconds. All right. I then have one into Advance. This gives us haste when we use Warcry and then four into Energized Charge. And if I had an extra point into Warcry, I would finish this off with five. This makes it where it does not cost as much mana, only 10, and you get an extra one and point two seconds of haste. OK. So really, every time you Warcry, you get haste for 2.3 seconds. And again, you can use Warcry every five seconds. You then want War into Juggernaut. This makes it where you're invulnerable after using it. Three into Breath of Aterra, one into Shout, and five into Toxic Companions. Listen to this. For four seconds after using Warcry, your wolves have a chance to cause enemies to bleed. 
and that's a hundred percent okay so you're going to be boosting bleed chance for your wolves by a hundred percent just by using warcry and then on top of this breath of etera you're going to get 300 health and this is a way actually you're going to help keep your life up all the time because you're getting 300 health five seconds 300 health five seconds 300 health and it really does do a lot those are the skills moving over to passives and right now this nutcracker is level 85 level 85 21 points into the base class eight into natural attunement eight into primal strength and five into hunter's restoration that is it for now nothing into shaman nothing into druid and moving over to beast master you want eight into your strength one into savagery four into boarheart one into ambush six into teeth this gives you tons of leech for your squirrels Five into Porcupine Constitution helps keep you alive. Eight into the Chase. Five into Maw. This is going to give you tons of armor shred for your squirrels. One into Hunters. This makes it where companions can use Aspect of the Shark. Five into Claw. Eight into Life of the Wilderness. And this also applies to your companions. These squirrels never die. So not only do they have a ton of life, not only do they have so much leech, they also gain your endurance as well. One into Circle of Life, eight into Maw. This gives your Aspect of the Shaw a greater effect and last longer. Ten into Viper Fangs. This makes it where your companions will hit quicker and they will get 100% increased damage over time. As you remember, this is a bleed build. One into Force of Nature. This makes it where you can make that one more companion, giving you ten. So those are the passives, okay? Now, a couple of things. These five points I have into Shelter. I have this because I needed to max out physical resistance. If you have better gear than me and you already have physical resistance, you don't need these five points into shelter. I did. OK, now, if this character was level 100, where would I put the remaining points? All right. Then my next six points go right here into survival of the pack. This is going to give us more melee damage and it's going to give your squirrels even more leech. OK, and then my next eight points would go right here into shamanistic infusion for an additional eight attunement and physical penetration. Those are the passives moving over to everyone's favorite gear, starting with idols. And before I show you the idols, don't forget that in the description is the advanced loot filter and advanced build planner. So if you are a person that loves min maxing and you want to see true end game gear, like what the best of kind of the best looks like, Check out the description, OK, but I like showing you what I'm currently wearing so you can compare that to the gameplay earlier. Now, my idols are not good, and this was called out during my stream, but there is one specific idol you want to hunt for and you can use four of them. OK, and that is this idol right here. This is increased minion bleed duration, and that can roll as high as 19 percent and then minion chance to bleed on hit, which can roll up to 49 percent. So this is actually a really good example and a fairly high rolled one, you would want four of these. And during the time of streaming, I was only able to find one. OK, but I will show you the rest of my idols. Minion chance to bleed on hit. Minion damage over time. Minion melee damage and minion melee stun chance. And then in here, it's just some resistances and other things I needed. OK, but that is the main idol you are looking for. But, you know, there's some other good ones. Minion damage over time is great, and that can roll as high as 32 percent. All right. Lots of options with idols. I like this one. Moving over to gear. There is only one unique item that is required for this build. You cannot make squirrels without Herald of the Scurry. OK, so for this build, there is one required unique, and it is only this one. As long as you have a Herald of the Scurry, you can make this build happen. All right. I'm going to go through each other item one by one. The Fang. And again, this makes it where you could summon wolves up to your maximum number of companions. Not required, but it is nice. Weapon. Increased damage over time for minions and increased melee minion damage. You want to try and find those two. And what's nice about this one is it also gives you your maxed poison resistance and it's an axe. OK, armor. This armor is terrible, but it's what I found when I was playing. Ribbons of Blood. I like this one because I was able to get minion damage on it as a legendary. This gives you health and gives you that much more leech and damage for your squirrels. Not required. Belt. Minion, minion, endurance health. 
Ring, minion, minion, elemental resistance, health. Gloves, minion, minion, health, health. Boots, vitality, health, health. And relic. You're going to see more damage leached on hit for minions. Three to frenzy totem, minion damage, void, and health. That is the gear. Now let's break down the character sheet for the Nutcracker. Like I said, I am level 85, strength 21, attunement 20, vitality 16, movement speed 31. When you look at resistances, void, necrotic, poison, and physical are all maxed. And then fire, lightning, and cold are not too far behind. I probably need one item that has a tier five elemental resistance on it, and I would be able to get all of my resistances maxed out. Additional defenses, nothing, nothing to talk about. I wish armor was higher, but it's just what it is right now. Now, when you look at defenses, endurance is at 53. Endurance threshold is almost 800. So endurance is really, really solid. Critical strike avoidance is at 43. We need one item to have a tier six crit avoidance on it, and that would get us that stat. And then of course, for damage, all we care about is our minions. Increase, increase minion melee damage, 540. Increase minion damage over time, almost 600. And increase minion health, 710, all right? Very good from a minion damage output. And I'm going to showcase that right now at the training dummy, okay? Now, if I've done my calculations correct, it should tick over 100,000 damage every second, okay? It should tick 100,000 damage every second from our squirrels. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the squirrels start attacking, okay? And now I'm going to leap at it, then hit Warcry, then hit Frenzy Totem, then hit our rage ability okay ready that's kind of the combo you jump war cry frenzy totem rage and now when the squirrels get off 133 120 113 110 97 133,000 damage per second per second okay let's do that again Squirrels are attacking, and you notice they're really small, so they all get in on the action, and you jump, and you war cry, and you frenzy totem, and you rage. And when that happens, and then you take them off, 121, 115, 109. I didn't let them attack for long enough. And remember that your upheaval totem can't attack the training dummy, okay? So you're going to be doing even more bleed stacks to that, so I'm guessing it'll probably be close to 150,000 damage per second. Last but not least, let's talk about leveling up this Nutcracker. You're not gonna be able to actually go into this build until you have a Herald of the Scurry, which is at level 70, okay? So how do you get there? That is the question. Now, when it comes to beating the campaign, when it comes to actually getting to end game, there's only four skills you need. And really the first 30, 40 levels, it's only three skills, all right? So just follow me for a second. You need Fury Leap, you need Swipe, you need War Cry, and then over here, you need Summon Frenzy Totem. Now, what's great about this is this is actually three of the skills that you are gonna be using for the build. Swipe is the only one that you will not be using. So this is what you wanna do. With Fury Leap, you want to go up. So you wanna take Crater, you wanna take Savage Impact, and you wanna take Aspect of the Mantis so you could jump more often, okay? Then you wanna come down and take the increased global damage. So one, so really one, two, three, and then down here, four. All right, that's what you want for your Fury Leap. Under Swipe, which is your main damage dealer, you wanna come here to get Leech. Then you wanna come here and here because you want Kill Threshold. It'll make it way easier for bosses as you are leveling. All right, then you wanna come up and get this one, Avatar of the Wild, which gives you more damage per attunement, okay? And Swipe really is just so good as you are leveling through it. Then you want to come to War Cry, and you want to come down first to get Berserker. And you could level up all these different things on, but actually you don't need that one. But this, 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 then you come up and get your crit chance, okay? Berserker is going to make it where you hit really, really fast. Okay, with War Cry. And then last but not least, you got your Fury Leap, you got your Swipe, you got War Cry, you come over here to Summon Frenzy Totem. And then you want Frenzy, you want Berserker Frenzy, and then you want Frenzy here. So all three, okay? That's what it's gonna just buff for it. And this mixed with Berserker makes you terribly, terribly strong. One, or one, two, three, four. And then once you find your Hail to the Scurry, you can switch into it. 
When it comes to passives, you basically just want to take anything you can find that gives you a boost to strength or anything melee or physical damage. So you just follow along melee physical damage. When it comes to gear while you are leveling, if you have access to and or low level gear, you literally just upgrade your weapons dual wielding as you go through the campaign. So it'd be like, okay, level six, I use these. At level 13, I use these. At level 30, I use these, and so on and so forth. Or you can do the same thing with upgrading your two-handed weapons. Now, if you don't have access to low-level uniques, you can go to lastepochtools.com, and you can just grab rare items. It literally works the exact same way, and you can level them up, okay? That's how you want to level the Nutcracker. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my Nutcracker? Does it look fun? Is there something I missed that I could push this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of this video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. It really does help the channel moving into the future. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 45 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. Weekly blog post, weekly podcast, access to the VIP lounge so you and me can chat. We got to get ready for multiplayer and you get a special title depending on where you sign up at. There's lots of other goodies. Again, first link in the description. Now, if the squirrels, if the nutcracker doesn't tickle your fancy, if you're looking for something else, there's 18 viable build guides in the description. So you could poke around at some of those. All of those have been updated for 085 F. And again, if you have questions, hit me up in the discord, advanced loot filter and build planner in the description as well. That's all I've got. Squirrel Mania. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out.